What's up folks, Jeff Everhart from WP Engine here, and I wanted to share a few details on an Astro Headless WordPress starter project that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. Anybody who's talked to me in the last couple of months has known that I've become a huge Astro fanboy, and there are a lot of good reasons, and I'll try and share a couple of those with you here. So first off, Astro is focused on making really fast content-focused sites. And I think the content focus is important, especially for people who are doing headless WordPress development, because that's most of the types of sites that we're creating. We're not creating complex web apps, we're creating websites that need to be fast and performant, and Astro gives you a lot of the tools to do that out of the box. Second, if you look at the, the structure of this Astro project, like a lot of other meta frameworks, uh, we have a pages directory. So we have this concept of page-based routing. And each one of these page components is extremely kind of simple and easy to use. Uh, the first com uh, component we have up here is this code fence, or what they're calling the front matter in the docs. And this is essentially the server side code that we want to run uh, you know, on the server as we build our Astro site, either with SSR or uh, static site generation. And so this lets us import all of our different Astro components. You know, Maybe we're making calls out to an API, where in this case, I'm reaching out with uh, WP GraphQL to you know, get a list of the most recent posts that we can display on our site like this. Um, and then when we get that data back, all we needed to do is declare a variable inside of this uh, code fence, and then that becomes accessible inside of our components so we can come over here and map through them. Um, beyond that, the syntax of the Astro component it is really great. It, it reminds me of a, a kind of a much simpler time in web app development, so lots of comparisons to PHP. Uh, it also sort of made me feel like uh, the early Express days when if you were using maybe like EJS or uh, Pug to do some templating, uh, it does that in a much cleaner fashion. So not only do we get this, can use these Astro components in a component-based way like we would with any sort of JavaScript framework, uh, but we also get this sort of expressive JSX-like syntax to map over different uh, pieces of data or do transforms or things like that, show data conditionally. So all that's really awesome and you can see that you know, that's what this template looks like here. Uh, but if we go back to my pages directory, you'll see that I've really only got two pages. Um, and the other one is using a, what it, Astro calls a REST uh, dynamic parameter in this URL path. So basically what that's do is doing is instead of getting just one slice of the path, we're getting you know the whole nested path. So it could have multiple different forward slashes in it, it could be a really complex route, and we're just taking that route as it is and using it in, in our template. So you can see here we do a little bit of massaging uh, to convert the URI that Astro that the Astro router takes in uh, to one that WordPress will accept, but that's because when we use WordPress as we create our content uh, and give it a structure in the CMS, each piece of content already has its own URI. So if we have like our category archive pages already have URIs built for them, each piece of content has one. Um, our parent, our pages have them and have relationships to other pages and maybe. You know, we want to structure our permalinks in a different way in a pen blog. Those are all things that we can just tell WordPress to do, and then WordPress will manage those paths for us. And instead, we just use this node by URI query in GraphQL to basically take a URI and then go get that piece of content by it. And then on that query, we sort of specify the different fields we want back on each content type using a fragment. So on a post, get me these things. On a page, get me these things. Um, and then down here, we have just a really simple switch statement in our code uh, that looks at the content type that GraphQL has returned and then resolves with a particular template. Um, and then down here, really, we just sort of use that template, pass it the content data, and then that gets rendered for us in whatever way that we want. So if we had a cut, for example, like a custom post type or something, we just add another case to this switch statement and point to a different template and boom, you've kind of got your routing all set up. And again, routing that's gonna build on top of what WordPress is already doing, instead of trying to override it using slugs or other forms of URIs, we can just sort of lean into the CMS. If we take a look at our single our single template, you know, we can see we're doing some conditional rendering here. Like if it has categories, we want to, uh, you know, show 
show those little category tiles. But if we go to a, a page type, which doesn't have categories, you know, we're not gonna show that stuff. Uh, same down here with some of the post details. So really flexible templating on top of Astro. And then another thing that I'll say is that if you're coming from Vue or Svelte land, where you're used to working with single file components, Astro gives you exactly that. So here you can basically see all the JavaScript that I have, uh, the styles that are, these styles are scoped directly to the component. And then if I do need to make something global, like in this case where I want to target uh, the markup that WordPress brings back with this WP block image uh, figure and then the image inside of it, I can just throw this is global directive on my style tag. And all of a sudden that gets brought up to the global scope while all of the other stuff um, stays scoped directly to the component. So lots to like about Astro. I'm gonna take the next couple of minutes to just show you how I can quickly deploy that on our Atlas uh, WP, headless WP hosting platform. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new branch. We'll just call this Atlas Deploy. Uh, and then we are going to actually just install a package called HTTP server. And so what this is going to do is uh, we're going to need to just modify the start command of our project. Uh, all right, so in here we should just be able to modify this start command and and then we're going to pass it the disk directory because that's where Astro is going to build our stuff. So we'll go ahead and save that out. Um, and add this to GitHub. And we'll push this, it's gonna gripe at me, so we'll set our upstream. Okay, cool, so now that we have that, I'm gonna come over into our Atlas portal, and I'm gonna create a new app. I'm gonna pull from my own repo. And this will spin for just a second. Um, yep, our Astro WordPress starter. And we can do like mono repo deployments if you want, but we'll skip that. Keep all that stuff good. Um, and then here we're gonna select our Atlas deploy branch. I'm gonna say I already have my WordPress instance. Uh, that's gonna be my demo content hub. And then lastly, I'm just gonna add an environment variable. Uh, so I called that uh, WordPress API URL. And then we'll just pass it this value. So that's going to spin for just a second. And here we can cue the Ben Holmes uh, whiteboard the web music da -da 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 for just a second. All right. So now it looks like our app's live. So let's open this up in a new tab and boom, there we go. We have our freshly built Astro site. Um, let's go ahead and just click around. And awesome. Everything is super fast, statically generated. And let's just take a look at, you know, what this looks like. Um, wow. So really not bad, you know, to, to We've got some decent, decently sized images there. Um, and really, you know, aside from that, 91 kilobytes, and most of that is this image. So Astro still super speedy. Um, so as you can see, like I personally think Astro is a great choice if you're gonna get started building with headless WordPress. It really focuses on honestly just HTML. And that's great because that's still most of what the web is, right? We get this great zero by JavaScript by default experience. And if you wanna layer on interactive elements like view components or React components, you can do that using their islands architecture. So definitely, um, if you're interested in this, check out the, the link to the GitHub repo below. I'm still kind of working on the starter, um, but hoping to get it uh, finished and ready for consumption here in the next couple of days, but just wanted to share what I've been working on and uh, stoke these astro flames a little bit further. Later, fellow astronauts, thanks for watching.